Hey guys, what's going on? It's Kermit the Frog here. Just kidding. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jack here from Jacktastic PCs. And today I'm going to be going over server hardware and what you should think about choosing when you're first starting up your home lab. So first off, you're going to need a actual server. Um, or you can use a desktop PC that you have lying around, so long as it supports a 64-bit operating system. However, older server hardware from the LGA 1366 socket isn't very expensive, yet it's extremely powerful. And there's tons of it on websites like eBay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at some right now. I've grabbed two servers, one from HP, one from Dell. The one from Dell is a PowerEdge R710. This is incredibly popular. Uh, it comes with two uh, quad-core CPUs. I believe these are quad-cores with hyper-threading. Uh, E5 2020, I believe that as hyper-threading. Um, and then you get 32 gigs of RAM uh, and all this stuff. You get the Dell remote access um, tool and all that. So there's a whole bunch about this uh, that's pretty sweet. Uh, and then the other server I picked out is a HP ProLine DL380 uh, Generation 6. This is a really nice server. It's really inexpensive. It comes with two 140 gigabit or uh, 146 gigabyte uh, SAS drives uh, and it's just all around a really nice server. It comes with 16 gigs of RAM. Once again, two quad-core CPUs. Uh, and a big enough power supply to support them. Now, the reason why I'm recommending you go with one of these servers and not necessarily build one yourself is because if something goes wrong, it's going to be a lot easier to find out what's wrong with it and get a replacement part for it uh, because there's still a lot of support for these servers because so many people have them. Whereas if you build your own server, you're likely going to have a vastly unique hardware combination versus other people online. And so for that reason, I'd recommend buying an old used server versus building your own. However, if you're like me and you just like to build your own stuff, I went ahead and I threw together a little parts list in eBay. Uh, you can shake it up and change it to be what you want to be, but we're going to head over and take a look at that. So the very first thing is we have two quad-core Xeons. They are the E5 5540s. They're 2.53 gigahertz. Uh, they're four cores, eight threads each. So that means you'll have eight cores and 16 threads, which is plenty enough to do all sorts of virtualization. Next up is one terabyte Seagate hard drive. Uh, you can get a one terabyte Western Digital Blue new for the same price. Um, and it doesn't matter where you get that from. Then I've got two 1U uh, passive heat sinks. Um, that fit the socket LGA1366. You have to be careful when you're buying CPU coolers for the socket because there are two different types. Uh, there's the one for the standard consumer motherboards that have the push pins like the regular Intel stock CPU coolers and then there are the ones with the screws that the server sockets use. So make sure you get one with the screws. That way it'll fit into our Tyan S7012 motherboard. I actually own one of these and I love it. It's a great motherboard. Uh, and then I got a Rosewill RSV R4000. I was going to get a less expensive case and you probably can. You're just going to be a little worried. Uh, weary about the motherboard compatibility. Then for the power supply, I got an EVGA 850 watt uh, semi-modular power supply. I also happen to have one of these. Great power supply, all the connectors you need, and it's high enough end that you're not going to have to worry about your power supply failing uh, before the rest of the system. And then I got 16, um, I got 32 gigabytes of RAM. I got quantity of two of uh, four by four gigabytes of DDR3 ECC RAM. Uh, so you'll have 32 gigabytes, 8 by 4 gigabytes of DDR3 ECC RAM, which is plenty enough for most virtualization. Uh, however, as you can see, this comes out to be $417 versus $250 for that machine and $143 for this machine. So you're ending, you're paying a lot more uh, for not that much more performance, and for that reason, I recommend you go with a pre built server versus buying your own. Then it comes to other hardware and installing other hardware into your systems in your house uh, as well as your server. Most of the servers you'll be buying will have at least two network interface connections um, and some like this HP ProLiant one even has four. Uh, and so that'll be plenty enough to do a router with it or any sort of combination of hardware and software that you can imagine. In my own system right here, I have a quad port NIC. 
uh, and I actually have one port which is feeding the system directly and then I have another port um, another cable coming in from my switch which is directly to my virtual machine virtual switch so just like that you can do it on these and so as you guys can see it's actually not that expensive to get into server hardware uh, you can pick one of these up build a lack rack which I'll do a future video on uh, and then you can just get going and doing all the stuff that we've been doing so far in this series and That's all for this video. If you guys like to drop a like down below if you didn't like it drop a dislike And if you really did tell me why in a comment tell me what you'd like to see in a future video and until next time peace out Also, don't forget you guys can go ahead and donate on the right side of my channel homepage uh, It'll help me check out some cool stuff like this build some cool stuff and just keep the channel going in general All right, peace out